Hello, and thank you for clicking on the link to know more about the project. The picture on the right, you probably have seen that many times, that's the adult brain. However, on the picture on the left, you see that the, how the brain forms and changes the size, and I should say the weights from, I should say, the prenatal to 29 days after, I should say, um, you see that all the way goes to the nine months, and after the birth, as a young child, as a teenager, and also as an adult. You see that the brain size changes, and you see that from the 29 days in the womb, all the way going to the adulthood. However, the question is that, is the size of the brain is going to remain the same, or it's going to change as a person gets older? Or you can think of that way, that if we can think of the brain atrophy, can we look at that? in a sense that after the adulthood until the age for example the old age has the size of the brain is it going to remain the same or it's going to change for example we can look at this picture which it refers to the data sets which i just got it from the oasis uh the website which shows that the people the observation aged from 60 years old to the 90 years old and we have the volume, I should say, of the brain in the cubic centimeter. Then. Now, you see that. Probably, most likely, you will think that, okay, the size of the brain, if I just can just fit a model into that, the size of the brain, as the people gets older, it's going to be modeled by a simple linear regression analysis. It shows that it's going to be, for example, as, for example, as you can see, you can think of, in a sense, that the person's, the brain size as it gets older with a very constant and fixed slope and the fixed i should say intercepts is going to decrease until the age of 90 years old but wait a minute you may have some questions and think okay why the model that we have before with the observations that we had and we just fit that with the fixed linear model it does not distinguish if that person has dementia as a result of the Alzheimer or it's a healthy brain. You can see that also on the pictures which I have on this slide, a healthy brain which does not suffer from the brain atrophy as a result of the Alzheimer has a bigger size in terms of the volume, in terms of the cubic centimeter, compared to the picture on the right side which shows a severe Alzheimer disease. Then we can come back and think that, okay, the model that we have is not going to be a right one. Probably we have to distinguish between two cases. The case that if the persons which we are modeling its brain size has a dementia or not, then essentially we can think of and we can decompose this model into two models, which is dictated by the variation that we're just going to have inevitably because of the Alzheimer disease and the brain atrophy which it comes as a result of it. But you may also ask that okay we think that that we have an Alzheimer disease brain but however with the Alzheimer if you want to think of it more technical we have a variety four stages of the Alzheimer. We have a mild cognitive impairments of the Alzheimer. We have the mild Alzheimer's. We have the moderate, I should say, dementia. And also we have the case of the severe dementia, which we can, as you can see from the previous page, we have the most, I should say, extreme, I should say, level of the brain atrophy and the reduction of the brain volume. Then, then you can think of it, okay, the model that we decompose into two models based on the case that if that person has a dementia or not, it can itself, if it has a dementia, it can be divided and decomposed into four different sub-models then. Because of the variation that you're inevitably going to have, because if the patients are diagnosed with different levels of the Alzheimer, we are just going to have a simple, I should say, cognitive test, CDR, and based on this score, we are just going to categorize, I should say, the different patients with the dementia onto different four categories of uh, the brain atrophy. And now, you may also think that, okay, wait a minute. If the person who has a dementia and Alzheimer, 
does it matter if that person is a woman or if that's a man? I just want to say that, okay, are we going to have a variation as a result of the gender from a woman to a woman? Is that going to have any impact on the size of the brain if either that person is diagnosed with the dementia as a result of Alzheimer or not? That's the legitimate question that they can ask. If the woman size, brain size, or the woman brain size, it's going to be different. But however, you may also think that, wait a minute, when we talk about the brain atrophy and the Alzheimer, you may have heard that the people with the high level of ICC education, maybe they are less prone to be diagnosed with the Alzheimer at the later age of their life then. Then you may think of, okay, what's going to be the impact of the education? Imagine if we have the person who has been studying for 12 years to achieve a high school diploma compared, for example, 12 years of education compared to someone which has studied for 16 years to get undergraduate degrees or 18 years with the graduate degree or let's say 20 years or with the PhD or let's say, for example, 20 years with a postdoc, this variation, which comes as a result of the changes of the level of the education, they are just going to have an impact on the brain atrophy and the brain size changes when you look at those samples that we have. You see that the variation and the changes between the level of education may have a legitimate impact on the, I should say, the reduced or the brain atrophy of the people that we have in our experiments or even lastly the thing that we are just going to talk about is that okay what is going to be the impact of the social economic statues of the people in our experiments on the brain atrophy or the reduction of their brain size at the ages after 60 years of old can we just say that if a person like that person who has a high level of, I should say, social economical status is going to have less, I should say, less impact, feel less impact by the brain atrophy at the later age compared to someone who has, I should say, a lower, for example, that person, a lower level of, I should say, social economical status or these variations which we are going to have within the social economic status, they are not just going to play any role in the brain atrophy. We do not know, I just, I have just, I should say, investigated, the, I should say, uh, the social economic status, I should say, of uh, the samples that we had. And essentially, in the project, I'm just going to use the Bayesian methods, a hierarchical Bayesian methods, using the probabilistic programming language, which is going to be the stand, in order to see that if, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to come with the hypothesis of what's going to be the hypothesis. We have two hypotheses. The first hypothesis is that all these variations that we talked about, they are not going to play any role I should say on the, I should say on the brain atrophy. We say that nothing is going to be changed. The, the age is not going to just make any changes. I should say on the brain atrophy. The size of the brain is going to remain the same from the 60 years of old to the 90 years of old, and there is no association between the age and the brain atrophy. That's going to be I should say our the first all null hypothesis. However. In the other scenario, which I have discussed in the project, in the Bayesian models, I talked about the alternative hypothesis. We say that not only the age plays a role at the size of the brain, and the brain atrophy occurs as, for example, as the, the people get older, as we saw that, for example, we are going to see that slope downwards, but as a result of the fixed effects, but also by looking into multi-level variation, I'm just going to look at that in the hierarchical Bayesian to look at in the sense that to say that, okay, the brain size, if I'm just going to look at that as 
the y-axis with respect to the age has going to be modeled with respect to the variations from, let's say, the variations at the socioeconomic status of the observations that I have. The level of the education, the variation of the level of education, change, I should say, has an impact on the level of the brain, on the size of the brain. The gender plays a role, and also the level that the people are diagnosed as it's going to play a role. And also, if the person is diagnosed with the dementia or not, also this variation plays a significant role at the brain atrophy that we are just going to model that using hierarchical Bayesian analysis. And now, as I said, I'm just going to use the R programming language, and I'm using the interface R-STAN, using the hierarchical models to answer these interesting questions.